grew up in the Dayton area, but I would always hear your voice right. on the radio. So how'd you get started? Well, I was born and raised in Portsmouth, Virginia, which is in the area of Virginia, down, down on the coast, they call the Tidewater area, north of Portsmouth, Virginia Beach. And I uh, went through all the schooling there until I graduated from high school. Um, and I went to a small boys school in Virginia, outside of Richmond, Randolph-Macon College. Uh, then transferred to the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, because we had a great communication school, and that's what I wanted to get involved in. And I got a degree in communication. I got out of school. I went to. I, had, I was married and had two kids. And um, I uh, got a job at a TV station in High Point, North Carolina. Worked there for six months. Got a radio job in a little town between Charlotte and Greensboro, Salisbury, North Carolina, thousand watt radio station. And I got a job because they uh, let me do high school and small college broadcast football and basketball games, American Legion baseball. I worked there for five years. Um, and then I got a job with a professional basketball team back in the home of area of Virginia for me and uh, the Virginia Squires and the Old American Basketball Association. They transferred out of Washington, D.C. into the, the, the Virginia area as a regional franchise. And while I was there for five years, I did AAA baseball with the New York Mets Farm Club in Norfolk. And that was the thing that kind of opened the door for me to get the uh, the Reds job. Al Michaels was here for three years and left to go to the San Francisco Giants. And uh, my general manager of the baseball team in, in Norfolk recommended me to the Reds after a chance meeting between the Reds uh, assistant general manager and the guy that I work for. He came home from uh, the Houston winter meetings in baseball and said, hey, um, I recommended you for the Reds job. Do you have a tape you can send them? I said, yeah, I can send them the tape. So I did. Um, and later on, I found out 221 people applied for the job, and I got it. Wow. I was one of three finalists. The other two were current, at the time, major league broadcasters with other clubs. And I believe then, and I believe until I die, the only reason I got the job was because I could work for less money than they were willing to work for. And that worked in my favor, and I signed a three-year contract, and um, the rest is history. You retired in 20, what, after the After season? the 19 season. What is your most memorable season, I guess? That well, I, you know, I was associated with the Big Red Machine teams, uh, and I was fortunate because when I went into the broadcaster's wing of the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York, in 2000, I think the fact that I was associated with that team as a broadcaster had as much to do with any talent that I might have had to get me in there. Um, that was the team that uh, that I'm most proud of having been associated with, but my favorite team was the 1990 team because that team was not favored to win anything. Not as division, much less win the National League pennant or win the World Series, and they did it all. And that was a team that um, I think uh, exposed the fact that of all the clubs, uh, all the teams in, in every sport, uh, I think baseball is the most important sport when it comes to uh, chemistry and having a group of guys that got along well together um, because of the, by virtue of the number of games that you play. I mean, you have a, a six weeks of spring training and then you play from late March until the end of September. And you're 162 regular season games plus 30 spring training games. And these guys got along better than any team I've ever been around. It transcended uh, race. It, it transcended everything. You, the, the African American guys, the uh, white guys, the Hispanic guys, everybody loved each other. Everybody got along. Plus, the fact it was managed by a bombastic manager, um, in Lou Pinella, who was a trip to be around every day. And they were just spectacular. And so, I, you know, it's hard for me to say that was my favorite team. That big red machine team, that's a team that people arguably say. Uh, could very well have been the best team in the history of baseball, and if not, then in the top two or three. Those are the people who I still remember. Well, I, yeah, you, well, you know, you had Bench and Rose and Morgan and Foster and Geronimo and Griffey, Concepcion. I mean, it, Griffey, it, it was just a, an incredibly talented baseball team. Um, they went about their work uh, in business-like manner. They never rubbed anybody's nose in it by showing them up or doing things when they had a big lead that they were not ex uh, supposed to do. 
And uh, they had just great confidence in their ability to win. I'll never forget at Riverfront, um, those rare occasions when they went into the seventh or eighth inning, three or four runs behind, nobody ever went anywhere because they knew that more often than not they were going to come back and win. And more often than not, they did. Um, and my two best friends among uniform people in all the years I was around were Pete Rose and Joe Morgan. Um, Joe passed away three years ago. He was the most intelligent baseball player I've ever been around. He could have he could have been a commissioner. He could have been uh, an owner of a club. He could have been a general manager. He was a great broadcaster, and he's a Hall of Fame second baseman. And I stay in touch with Pete on a regular basis today. They were the two guys that I had the most, uh, had the best relationship with, and, and thank God it extended beyond their playing days, and certainly, even though Joe's gone, it would be the same way. Now, this Friday starts the All-Stars. World Series. World Series. Yes, ma'am. That's Series. okay. All right. Um, but uh, who do you think is going to win the World Series this year? Who's your pick? You could ask everybody in this room and you'd get a different answer. Um, my my heart lies with the Arizona Diamondbacks. I'd like to see them win it. Um, uh, I don't. I would say on well. I know Texas is favored to win. Um, they uh, were not supposed to win the division, but they almost did. They gave it up at the end of the season, and Houston snuck in and won the division. But they're managed by one of the great managers in the history of the game, and Bruce Bochy and. Um, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb. I, I think Arizona will win this World Series because they did something that to get there was incredible. They beat three teams they weren't supposed to win in the postseason, and that was Milwaukee and then the Dodgers and, and then, of course, Philadelphia, and they did that in a seventh game that was played in Philadelphia, which is not the easiest thing in the world to do. So I'm going to, I'm going to give the nod to Arizona, and I hope I look like I'm smart. <laughs> okay. Now, with baseball, now we're – Tired and now you're golfing. Tell us about golfing more. Golfing more. Yeah. Have you always been golfing? Have you been? No, well, I did. My dad was a good player growing up, and then I, when I was, I started playing, and I then when I went away to college, and I'd play up five days a week. I'd get my classes at eight o'clock in the morning and be done by ten thirty or eleven, and go out and play golf every day. And then when I got out of school and I had kids and I went to work and got away from it. Got back into it about 30 years ago, and I've played quite a bit since then. Uh, and I've been fortunate because I've played all over the world and, and most of the great golf courses here in the States. That's that's a great thing about being involved in, in sports because you can go into a city and they will uh, they'll let you play in return for tickets. And that's <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that. And so we were fortunate to play a lot of good golf courses. I think it's the greatest game in the world. I, I, and, I'm not, and that's that's said by a person who's not a very good player. Now you do a tournament or a fundraiser? I've got a, I've got a, the Reds Community Fund. That's one of the proudest things in my life for a guy that can't play a lick to have his name put on a golf classic. Um, the, the proceeds go to the Reds Community Fund and it's the biggest single fundraiser that they have every year. Um, and it's one of the highlights of my year. I, I thoroughly enjoy being involved in it. Uh, it's going to come up in June of next year. Uh, they're still in the process of deciding where it's going to be played, but um, it's 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 been so much fun for me, and uh, I, like I said, I look forward to it every year. Do they pick a different golf course each year? Then? No, normally over the longest kind of time they they were well, one particular course, and lately, when the pandemic came and everything changed, um, whether we've been at Macatiwa, we've been at Losantaville. And um, I don't know whether they've de determined uh, where they're going to play the one next year, but they've got the date down. They're talking to a number of different courses now. Tell me a little bit about PXG. You're oh. here. What is this? This is about? what this is the coolest place in, in the whole tri-state area to begin with. I mean, I've never seen anything like this, and um, I'm a uh, I'm a. I'm a supporter of, of this company. I, I've got a driver, I've got a five wood, I've got a putter, um, and I've played the golf course out in Scottsdale that Bob Parsons owns, and Bob's also the owner of this company. Um, it's it's really, uh, that's a great golf company in terms of equipment. And um, I've been thrilled with the, with the clubs I have, and, and it's nice to be 
here and, and see a place like this and talk to people that are involved in the game. Uh, I'd rather talk to people involved in the golf game than I would in baseball. I get I get more of an enjoyment out of that. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to at least for one day be associated with the company. <laughs> That's great. And then we're going to get some video of you uh, showing us how you got to be. Or... Can't you find something better to do than that? <laughs> If I had this in my house, I'd never do anything.